down, get down to like the minutia of the movie. That's fun. I think it's not even funny. a real movie, to be honest. No, there's no plot. There's no hero's journey. <laughs> the funniest thing to me was explaining this to Teed, who is, you know, not a generation, but just like a few years removed from this sort of that sort of craze and be like and him being like were people actually doing this and we had a yes like we yes all bro <laughs> we were inspired project x changed our lives not me though, that was our that was our renaissance <laughs> project x being our animal house is tough people but legit house died tough. at project x parties like out here yeah. in katie <laughs> it was crazy be real smile for be real y'all smile for be real yeah hey. be real Shout out to the podcast audience listening to us take a be real photo right now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's better than at a, like a funeral, the ones you see on like Twitter or whatever. Oh God, <laughs> you ever seen those? No, <laughs> you haven't seen that. Somebody's uh, yes, like I have uh, had, had to be real, and it's just like at, at my uncle's funeral, like uh, truly taking a picture of the open casket, <laughs> and like Gen Z I, is like fully unhinged. <laughs> I, I just don't get be real, man. Like that doesn't sound like fun. Maybe it's because I'm like I'm an adult and all my friends are boring and have like jobs, so they're just at like their Dude, computers all day every day. What, but <laughs> you know what, my be real would be it'd be me me getting waxed in Madden would be my be real photo. <laughs> like that's all it would be. Anyway, uh, or Derek screaming at a bunch of kids. Like, is that your be real photo? Uh, it's either that or just like me looking like I am like on the edge <laughs> in a classroom <laughs> because i'm so because i'm so bored because it's like we're, we're reading lord of the flies or something and i'm just like this book sucks <laughs> like, why are we reading this? have you started assigning 1984 to your kids to start giving them ideas about capitalism and uh stuff like that no i just told them to go outside <laughs> like, if you want to if you want to read 1984 look out your window <laughs> speaking of lord of the flies <laughs> and uh barbaric acts yeah, we're Ooh. talking about bar- mm, transitions. We're talking about Barbarian this week. Welcome to the One Take Podcast, episode 123. Uh, we've been off for, yeah, I know, we've been off for a minute. Had to do a couple of, uh, had to do a couple of throwback reviews, if you will. Something that we kind of got away from for a minute, but uh, because movies were actually coming out. But it turns out uh, the movie industry hates like the last three weeks of summer despise yeah. it they don't they didn't release anything they released an idris elba Li- fights a lion movie and dragon ball z i watched idris elba stab a lion with a knife <laughs> and, <laughs> and i watched dragon ball what z. we got to <laughs> right and so they uh they finally released a good good film they finally released a good movie um and even if it was a bad movie i think we all would have still gone and seen it but uh barbarian um but if you hear heard that voice, Derek is back with us. I know that Hi. was like an eighteen minute cold open, but <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, Derek is back with us for the first time since Project X. You won't see Teej because he's uh he's breaking several California state laws right now, driving Back. and podcasting. Which Gavin Newsom is on your ass, Teej. Hey, bro, gotta do what you gotta do for the content. Gotta do what you gotta do. I'm not, I'm not on this podcast, so I would fuck you guys up talking about <laughs> <laughs> he uh it basically this is the evolution of seinfeld's uh web series is now podcasting mm. cars getting coffee <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that was a very Podca- neat joke podcasters, thank you very much podcasters and cars getting citations <laughs> getting, citation, <laughs> getting pulled over um barbarian came out just a couple of weeks ago uh rated you haven't R. seen it yet go see that shit yeah, right. um, it's we're gonna still, tell you that right now. Go see it. By the way, we all fuck with it to some extent. So go see it. We'll get into it in a minute. Probably a lot of heavy spoilers in like the first reviews of this. Just to be completely honest, um, so I'm telling you now. If you haven't seen it yet, go see it. Yeah, Come back turn and this off later. and listen to us later. Um, it's a very fast <laughs> movie. So... What? Uh, I was saying the same movie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Turn it off now. All right. Um, it's a very quick movie, one hour and forty two minutes long. So yeah, there's not a there's not a lot to not a lot of filler to uh, talk about here. It uh, has a seven point seven on IMDb. It is rated the number ten overall popularity movie right now. Seventy nine Metascore, which is hard to do. Uh, 
Barbarian, a woman staying at an Airbnb discovers that the house she has rented is not what it seems. Pretty good synopsis, actually. Director and writer Zach Krieger, who, by the way, and I've been telling you on this in the group chat, is one of the creators of the web series The Widest Kids You Know, which was formative comedy for me back in seventh grade. Now you fucked up. Now you, now fucked, you up. Now fucked up. You have fucked up now. You have fucked up now. Um, it uh, stars Georgina Campbell, Bill Skarsgård, Justin Long. Uh, Stop right and, there. <laughs> Don't reveal well, any more cast members. Uh, and well, Richard Brake is is a guy named Frank in this as well. Um, he plays a plays a big part. Uh, you got to give this guy a shout out. We'll say about him, Matthew Patrick Davis as well. We won't tell you who his character is, but it. Did you say this had a ten million dollar budget? It had a ten million dollar box office. I don't know. It had, okay, was. so it's it's made. I can't find the budget, but it's made thirteen million worldwide. Um, so far, let's see. Barbarian budget. This is gonna earn back. Yeah. Uh, okay, so it was a ten point five yeah. million dollar budget. Earned it all back in the first weekend, which is good for movies. But horror movies kind of do this on their own. They also marketed this kind of strange. Like it took, you know, I didn't see as much marketing for this as you would have seen for, I don't know, The Nun 8. But this was originally uh, going to be a Hulu movie. And then people were like, uh, this shit bangs. And they were like, huh, yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> so nothing else is coming out. And they were like, fuck it, let's put it in theaters now. So nothing else is here. Yeah, and look, it's fighting against co- it's fighting for its life against college football and NFL football, <laughs> but still, um, enough people went and saw it to make it worth putting out in theaters. Yeah, Has number one a, at the box office this week because nothing else was out worth seeing. Ninety three percent on Rotten Tomatoes, seventy four percent audience score, which is actually kind of interesting. Smart, darkly humorous, and above all else, scary. Barbarian offers a chilling and consistently unpredictable thrill ride for horror fans. Let's get, um, well, let's go with Derek first and then we'll go Tej. So we like, we're, there's some connection issues, so we're not talking over each other, but go ahead. Derek. Sure. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and like not even beat around the bush right now. This is an A plus for me. Nice. Um, I love this movie <laughs> so much. Uh, uh, like you said, it was an, it's like an hour, 45 minutes. It was a breeze to watch. Um, there were not that many people in my theater when I went and saw it. There was truly like me and then like three other couples. And, you know, it was, it was nice to feel like a seventh wheel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, because it was literally like I was sitting in my seat alone, literally like covering my ears, like squinting through my eyes. I'm just like, this movie is scary. Um which I'm just kind of a big baby anyways when it comes to horror movies. Um, but uh, it was so much fun. I didn't see, like, I didn't see any of what was happening in, the, in this movie coming. Like, nothing that happened in this movie I ever saw coming. I, I'm, I'm really impressed with just, like, what they did with the story and, like, the, the beats that they took and, like, the places they went. It was funny. Um, when Justin Long comes in um, and his characters are just introduced, I was like, this feels like a weird place for this story to go. But then it was like, oh, no, this is actually like it feels natural and it feels like it felt I, I don't know. I, I can't I, I don't really have a ton to say about it just because it's all positive <laughs> And I want to like wait until we get into like the actual like talk of the movie. Major uh, spoilers. Just know that it, yeah, just know that it's an A plus for me personally tg with us yes i'm here you hear me yes, yes sir. sir all right go ahead give your review so we're not talking over each other with uh with with uh you breaking laws all right all right well uh i down in the movie theater i was having a great time i really liked the kind of switch i saw just the trailer about the the main character going that guy that you're or like, is he a bad guy? Is he not a bad guy? And so I thought that was the extent of the break into this Justin Long part of the movie where all of a sudden he's on the 10, he's on the 101 living his best life and and singing. All of a sudden his life kind of comes crashing down. Cool transition to take the movie. But uh, I, 
I enjoyed the whole movie. I realized I had a lot of questions that I just assumed were going to be answered. And so I didn't really think about, assume there were certain things that were going to be answered. I spent a lot of the time, I spent probably half the time thinking that the movie had these gender dynamics, which obviously it was to a certain extent. And the other half, I really thought this was about um, housing and kind of like the way neighborhoods, neighborhoods are gentrified. And I thought that they did a really good job of establishing that it's not just there. There are certain kinds of subgenres of scary movies. Like, is this person bad monster? There are also monsters down in the basement. Like, those, those are two separate genres. And then the house is bad. Whatever is in this house, like, like you should be scared because the house in itself is uh, when she's sleeping over the night with Bill Skarsgård and she asks him, did you, did you open my door? That, like, Bill Skarsgård is saying he didn't open the door. And if he, in fact, didn't open the door in the house, regardless of whatever's going on inside the house. Well, when there's a point where she finally leaves out where she is in the neighborhood and the way that it's shot and the way that it's scored is an extension of the house is bad. This is the neighborhood is bad. This whole neighborhood is fucking new boss is like, yo, you're staying where? Get the fuck out of that neighborhood right now. So I'm like, okay, some crazy shit going down in this neighborhood. And so I'm thinking this is a story about just going through the story and then the movie just kind of ends and I think that they resolve the dynamics part of it but then I was left, left with a whole bunch of like wait were we not talking about just what has to do with it like I understand that uh, one of the characters when he did flashbacks that's like oh but I thought there were so many strings that they pulled out that they just didn't land so when it ended you know I was at that animal draft house which i'm sure you all have been to and so you know they drop off your check and she dropped off my check and i was like there's no way this movie's ending in the next there's too much to explore and i'm having a good time so that much they, they just must have jumped into it and i was just like oh shit i had a lot more questions than i was left with answers but as i enjoyed it i would say i would give it a b plus it's a very fun movie it's really well. It's acted really well. I just I just feel like there were a couple things within the shit and land it with, but, but I still had a pretty, pretty amazing time, and especially given how I was pretty, pretty blown away about what they were able to do with it. I'll give it. All right, so B plus from Tej. I'm gonna have to. Hopefully, we can cut that together. I was. Were you hearing every other word? Yeah, yeah that was yeah. kind of choppy, but I think I got most of it. Yeah. All right, so Teej gives it a B plus. Had some unanswered questions. Um, Dex, go ahead. Uh, I'm I'm right there with Derek now, and I'm giving this an A plus. When I I saw the movie, uh, I got invited to like a little like press screening for it, uh, like okay. the day before it came out. Yeah, I mean, I saw it a day early. You know what I'm saying? It came out on Thursday. I saw it. But Wednesday. still, <laughs> when you when you when you mark when you lead with press screening, I'm just yeah. like, well, I was in there with a bunch of other over with couples. Like, <laughs> I'm here with the I'm here with the coastal elites, the Gulf yeah, Coast. I'm, I'm here with the the press, uh, the movie press of Houston. You know, the most the elite main, people on the planet, the lamestream yeah. media. <laughs> <you know? laughs> but yeah, I got invited, and I was like, hmm, I don't know. I don't usually fuck with horror movies. That's not my bag. But I was like, you know, fuck it. It's a press greeting. I'm going to go like, and pretend to be an elite, whatever, whatever. So I go and this movie starts. And like everybody else, like you watch the trailer, you're expecting it to be like, okay, she goes to this house. There's a dude already there. The dude's going to like be a demon and like fuck with her and like murder her or something, whatever. Like, that's fine. But no, this movie like just completely flips on its head like 30 minutes into it. And you're like, oh, shit. Like, what the fuck is going on here? And then, like everyone keeps saying, everyone who's seen the movie will tell you, like, you have no idea what the fuck is coming next. And you don't. And I love that feeling. I usually, like I said, I don't fuck with horror movies. I only started watching horror movies because y'all made me on this pod. Y'all bullied me. We literally watching... bullied you into watching good movies. <laughs> y'all bullied me into watching Midsummer and uh, Candyman and The Invisible Man. And I, I, I watched this one. And Nothing I was like, you hits. know what? 
you know what? This movie fucking bangs. I went and saw it twice. It's like, oh. It was that damn good to me. Like, even though it was scary as hell. I Even the second time when I watched it, I was sitting there like watching through my fingers at some point because this movie is tense as hell. Like the music is perfect to like make you scared. It like, I love a movie that knows that the audience knows like movie tropes. So like they'll just have characters like get into a car and like the camera angle will be like a little off and you're like, Oh, like some shit's about to happen. And they're like, they're just literally fucking with you. Like nothing is about to happen. Like they're just sitting in a car, but because Zach Krieger knows that, you know, horror movie tropes, it's still like a tense moment. And I love that shit. Uh, I love the way this movie is shot. I love the way it sounds. And uh, we'll get into spoilers. So I can talk about, you know, how much I love Justin Long's character and what that means and all that. But uh, yeah, man, I, I fucking love this movie. I started out with like a giving it like a B plus, And then I just couldn't stop thinking about it. And I saw it again. And I was like, you know what? A plus. Like this movie, I love this movie. It's my third favorite movie of the year so far. Third Behind. favorite movie of the year? Behind everything, everywhere, all at once. And wow! And Beast and Top Gun Maverick. I got, I got this one. Oh yeah, Beast. Uh, it's tied for third. <laughs> Dragon Ball Z superhero. A movie I will never watch. <laughs> no disrespect. Um, None taken. The <laughs> I'm a little lower on this than 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 y'all are. Not because not because I like hated it or anything. I uh, really enjoyed my time. Watching it, watching a watching a horror movie by yourself is tough. Like, and I had to do that, especially when when you're married and you have a built-in person to go to these horror movies with. Like, it's a tough look to just be, you know. Hi, hello. <laughs> now, so I know the feeling, Derek. And it's also you don't have anybody to like bounce the 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 fright off of. Where you're yeah. just like, did you like? Are you scared? I'm scared. <laughs> I'm so fucking scared I, right now. <laughs> I whispered multiple times, like too, like not like too loud or whatever. But I was just like, "What the fuck?" And like, yeah. no one, no yeah. one responded. And I was like, "Oh, so I guess I'm just oh, the asshole then." Yeah. I'm here, yeah. So yeah, I am here by myself. Um, I did go. I I think I audibly let out, a, "Oh no!" In the, in the theater a couple <laughs> times. That one, that one got a chuckle. But there uh, were multiple. Uh, don't do it. Don't do it. Like right. <laughs> in the screening, like, no, girl, no. Right, girl. I, um, I was a little lower on it, uh, not not for any particular reason other than I I've kind of s- seen some of the stuff like done before where, and I almost not that I say that I didn't know where it was going to end up. I kind of figured that it was going to going to be some some sort of demon or something living in the house. I kind of felt that Bill Skarsgård's character was always going to be a bait and switch, even with the marketing. I didn't realize the messaging that the that the movie was going to end up talking about. Other, uh, I thought it was like Tej was saying, probably going to be about gentrific- gentrification or something of that sort. Um, but no, it, you know, it kind of kind of harkens back to films like that are more pulpy, like The Hills Have Eyes and and mm-hmm. things of that sort. Not to completely ruin the movie, but like it sort of borrows from some of those movies, but puts its own twist on it and has, like horror movies do now, most of them, in, unless it's named The Conjuring or whatever, has a has a message to it, and I think that message is very poignant and very good, um, and I think it's pretty well pretty well done. Uh, after, especially after Dex explained it to me, like a <laughs> like I'm a big dumb idiot. Um, but it just it, yeah it kind of borrowed from things that i had seen very well made the score of the movie is incredible it's uh, really really good one of the best scores of any movie or any horror movie that i've seen for a long time those synths that are in the movie it's just it's it's really good i thought uh, was it uh, georgina campbell um yeah, yeah i thought yeah. georgina campbell was very good. Bill Scar- Skarsgård of the Skarsgård clan, one of like 18 brothers and dad uh, to act in movies. Um, he's always good. It's been been good since it. Uh, and of course, Justin Long, just as he does, just popping up in random horror movies. Dude, Justin uh, Long will be in anything. I was looking at his filmography and I was like, what the fuck is all this? He will never turn down a check. <laughs> Somebody that like is always consistently good in everything that he's in, but it, it is somebody that was on a different career path, like trajectory, like should have been in maybe this should have been like a Joseph Gordon Levitt. You know what I mean? 
where where that sort of career trajectory like semi handsome funny man the Zach Krieger got him because he's like I want somebody like today's Tom Hanks whereas like if you look at who Tom Hanks was in the 80s and the 90s he's just this everyman guy and we don't have that as actors anymore you're either like super hot or like just mega talented and they can't deny Timothy Chalamet it. is right there. You think he's right there? Yeah, <laughs> the every <that's> man. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so yeah, having him in the movie was really good because like, like again, he's consistently good and everything he does. He's also very funny. He's all hilarious, just, yeah. dude. Mm-hmm. This movie I did not expect for this movie. <laughs> yeah, this movie mm-hmm. is extremely funny too. Um, but but didn't linger with me as much as I thought that it was going to after I kind of left the movie, like it washed over me and when, uh, it was very scary and it would definitely took a turn that I wasn't expecting, expecting it to take when it, when it finished. And like teach said, it did just kind of end like not to, not to spoil the movie. Like it did just kind of, it was done. And maybe that's fine for a lot of horror movies. A lot of sometimes horror movies don't have that finality to it. They'll leave it open ended for sequels and things like that, but yeah, uh, it's not going to be a Barbarian Seven. Like, no, 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 not they at all. Are no. Like we're done here. We don't know how many women he had in that basement. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we'll talk about it. But I, I think that I think yeah, <laughs> allegedly, the, the, allegedly, I think the fine, not even allegedly. There's videotapes. Spoiler. Um, <laughs> I I think the finality of it was was interesting. I think it was very well made. I think the score was good. The performances, he got good performances out of all of his actors. Really awesome uh, directorial and writing debut, I believe, for feature feature debut for Zach Krieger. But um, I'd like to see what else he can what else he can do with this. This also goes into a long line of now comedians making horror movies. Shout out Jordan Peele. But um, I uh, this just kind of tells me that comedians are just fucked up. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. yeah. So but I feel like Zach Krieger, like this movie is it's fucked up, but like in a way that tells you he's not fucked up because like the message, <laughs> like you said, it's so poignant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. But uh yeah, I I gave it I gave it a B. I'm gonna stick with that. Um one of the better one of the better horror movies of the last I don't know, probably like five, six years, definitely one of the more original ones too. Um, as far as how it's made and the bait and switch of it all, but it does borrow from a few other, from a few other things, and all films borrow from each other. So I'm not taking that many points off of it. I'm Originality just saying, is dead. Oh yeah, well that's fine. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I'm just uh, that's where I am with it right now. If I revisit it, and I feel feel like the score may not my score may go up, but um, yeah, I kind of just left the theater, and when it was done, I was done. So that's where I'm sitting with it. Um, Let's get into some spoilers. So if you haven't seen Barbarian, go see it. It'll be in theaters for a while now. It's not competing with anything until like, don't worry, darling comes out. Um, and even then. And even then, mm, yikes. Hey, bro, this is uh, the Woman King Erasure right now. How dare you? Oh, yeah. oh right. I have a ticket to go see that movie this weekend. <laughs> um, so we keep, Tej keeps coming in and out. So hopefully we'll get him back in here in a little bit. But uh, let's let's talk about spoilers. So Cut off now, go see Bar- Barbarian, and uh, come back to us. So, the whole twist of the movie um, is that there there is a mongoloid inbred monster in the in the uh, bottom damn. bottom of the house in these in these caves. Bill Skarsgård is not that ugly, <laughs> <laughs> fam. I. I just did not wake up expecting to hear the word mongoloid today. <laughs> like, uh, well, like, it's been so long <laughs> since I've heard someone say the word mongoloid. That was not this paleolithic. Oh, yeah. my bingo card. <laughs> Jesus this Christ. First man mongoloid. type creature. First uh, man. This Lucy. Um, like. Yeah. <laughs> this, it's, it's a seven foot naked woman inbred thing that roams the bottom of the house in underground caves that the previous owner who's still alive dug and um tortured raped, women tor- raped and tortured women in until he bred like kids and kids of kids and clones of clones and yeah, i just i i, I want to 
just get this out in the open right now. I could fix her. <laughs> <laughs> I could fix her. She'd just give me a chance. Oh, so <laughs> Derek watched this movie and said, Mommy. <laughs> I said, oh, well, I'm no longer not in the couple now. So. <laughs> um so the one the the thing actually played by a man who I gave a shout out to earlier is named the mother. Yeah. Um, Matthew Patrick Davis is the name of the actor called yeah named the mother and uh, is he the tallest person of all time? Or Apparently, put... good lord, um, he's six foot eight. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, <laughs> so, so they have uh, the mountain playing the mother. We'll and... go, we'll go piece by piece through this movie. But one thing I just have to say right now is that I have never been so horrified and so excited as watching the mother break through a wall, rip off a man's arm and then beat him to death with it. Like that was incredible. Content. That was the, okay. So I, it was incredible content, but I, one of the things that I saw coming from a mile away, which is like him right. playing a joke in the movie is a trophy. She's not coming into here. Like, Immediately, like, I've been oh, here she, fifteen she, years. She ain't coming in, and all of a sudden, it's just boom. Hulk this man smash. is being beat to death with his own arm. I was like, I'm usually not Cinema. into like violence and shit, but I was like, that's incredible. That's amazing. It, it got, that scene alone got a seven minute standing ovation at TIFF. <laughs> It, yeah, it was that scene and Brendan Fraser for uh, in, the whale. Whale. <laughs> in the whale, which is actually the same movie, by the way. But um, the okay, so like Tej was saying, if you if we could piece that together, it was basically: is the house haunted? Is it a haunted neighborhood? Is is the person haunted? Like, it what was these things? And you kind of get that. And it builds up that tension for a long time. There's a lot of tension building in this movie before there is some sort of resolution to where you figure out like what is actually the thing uh, haunting them. And I think that's pretty smart. It was like 35 minutes into the movie before you, before Bill Skarsgård goes down into the, into the thing or into the tunnels. Yeah. yeah. This movie, like it knew that, People were going to come into it thinking, oh, it's about a creepy guy who's at an Airbnb. Like, he's going to be a creep and, like, killer and shit. So you're watching, like, the first 35 minutes of this movie, like, uh, you know, when you first meet Bill Skarsgård, you're like, oh, he's kind of creepy and awkward and weird. He looks like, like Bill Skarsgård. He looks like he's, it. He's definitely a murderer. And then, like, he starts talking to him. And you're like, is he, is he weird? Like, when does he turn weird? He's not that weird. And then... He just dies. Like <laughs> it's brains just, beating. It <laughs> just truly head bashed against a wall. That and... was unreal. Unreal. Jarring. I <laughs> I jumped and almost screamed audibly. <laughs> <laughs> I um, just was like laugh. I just couldn't help but just like laugh the whole time because it was just so violent and kept going. And I was like, okay, mom, stop. You got him. He's he's <laughs> done. Stop it! He's already dead. <laughs> um, so I, the one thing though I will say about this movie that I hate with horror movies, and you got to do it. It's like the the final girl sort of thing. Uh -oh. Leave, just leave. <laughs> just go, just yeah. leave. Which you like, makes a lot of awful decisions in this movie. Awful, <laughs> terrible decisions. And when when she's like when she can't find uh, Keith. And she's just going down the hallway, going, Keith, Keith. It's like, it's <laughs> like, right now, Keith. It's like, just, just go, just, just leave, get in your soon. car, go. But home. that's the thing. She did like when she first saw the the hallway. She's like, nope, it's time to go. <laughs> and I was like, smart. This movie is now going to be twenty minutes, and it's a short film. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I, I. I think I think that that was that kind of took some points off for me because he could she continued to just be like, uh, okay, I'll I'll go I'll go down here now and like explore this mm -hmm. weird torture dungeon. Her <laughs> being like, we we have to save him. There's someone in there. I'm like, no, you don't. You really no, don't. You don't. You, you don't. don't. you don't know that. Person. <laughs> you just met this man. You you've been down there for weeks. <laughs> now you're I mean, out of just. There. He just showed up. 
like, but, he, he, he's of no importance. She uh, had to, to save him because she is our, a badass and she's awesome and she's good of heart. That's how she survived. So she had to. Yeah, Fair. she had to save him because, like, I mean, sure. I mean, she's a good person and we love her and we're rooting for her. And Georgina Campbell's a good enough actress that I was never like, get Tess the fuck out of here. I was always like, you know, I love Tess. I fuck with her. But uh, me, I'm out. Like, I'm, me personally, I'm built different. I'm built different. <laughs> I'm going home and I will not think twice about it. No, I see a door in a basement that leads into a hallway. I'm like, I'm burning the house down. Yeah. <laughs> this was not pictured on the Airbnb. I'm not supposed to be here. Like, this not... is not this is not listed in the amenities. <laughs> <laughs> so so the the first half of the movie, the first act of the movie cuts off with Keith, rest in peace and peace. Uh mm-hmm. RIP and P. He getting his bra- Bane's bra- uh Bane's brains brains bashed in. Brains bashed in. Bars. Nice. Okay. <laughs> We're there. I just had a stroke. Sorry. <laughs> we did. <laughs> yeah. It ends it ends with him getting killed by the bear Jew in uh <laughs> <laughs> It ends with him no. getting, <laughs> getting killed by the parachute and then glorious. Teddy ball glorious. game just went yard on that one. <laughs> that was on Lansdowne Street. Um, <laughs> all right, so it ends with it ends with him getting killed that way, and and it just cuts to like you hear hard. the mother just fucking scr- shouting into like the night, and you have no idea like what the fuck that is, and then yeah, we cut to. Justin Long on a beach, like <laughs> driving down the highway in a drop. Living the time of his, like having the time of his life. I'm like, good for Justin Long. And then you find out that he's a rapist. And you're like, oh man. I was so nervous when that shit happened. I was like, is are we about to like get a movie that's all about like cancel culture and like yeah, Zach like, Krieger well, what being we, like, <laughs> what are um, we about to say all here? these women are liars. But no. Thank God. That's not what this movie is about. Quite the opposite, actually. <laughs> Deej, you wanted to say something about um it, about that part of the uh of the script where he's finding out that he's being uh well not canceled, but even maybe even arrested. Like you wanted to, like when he's fine. That's such a great scene from Justin Long. Yeah. I, I thought he did. I had the same fear as y'all of I said, oh my god, this is gonna be a canceled culture horror culture and i was gonna walk out of the theater but then i quickly realized that they painted him as such a bow there which i was very happy about. yeah it paints it it paints it as like oh well she she's just she's just lying like who are you supposed to believe like yeah it, it's painted it like a uh like a sort of a, a bash against me too and then you get that scene with him in the bar talking to his friend you're like oh, oh he had, well oh, and also, you're and he, a rapist yeah, any interaction that he has with also any other people, he's an asshole too. So it after that initial contact, it is Justin Long plays it so well of just playing this sleaze bag ass asshole actor where No, I mean, no, I wouldn't I wouldn't do what they're accusing me of because I'm not but a like bad she, person. She like eventually stopped saying no. Yeah, like she wanted to do trust me. Yeah, she, she was so I, into it. Like when he when he answered the phone and called his friend the F slur, I was like, I know exactly who this man is. Like, yeah. <laughs> uh, went to high school with like ten of these dudes. Mm, All right, forked. sweet. I'm for. Uh, I did no, just want to re- uh, really quickly. I'm so sorry. Um, going back to the beginning of this movie, like the expectation of like when you find out that they've both been booked in this Airbnb, like at the same time on accident, you know, on accident, I was like, what I, the whole time I was like, what are they, what are they about to do? Like, is this some sort of like cult that's like brought them here? Like blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, Oh no, it's just really shitty. Like communication between like, between the (laughs) ultimate horror. Like, (laughs) I was just like I, I thought that was really funny. I'm just I like had that thought and I was like I have to say this before I die. Yeah, I definitely um, thought like oh, like the woman that she's calling who's like basically fuck off like mm. is, like going to be in on it or whatever, but yeah, yeah. they just kind of like 
ignored that part of it. It was just really bad luck. Yeah, I thought I didn't even think about that, uh, Derek, because that is that is funny where it's just like, oh, yeah. So it was bait and switch by the marketing. That's incredible writing. Right. I was like this, you know, how do they end? I was like, how do they end up at like what happened between like Airbnb and home away? I'm like, what happened here? I was like, how did this get messed up? There is something going on in the in the roots. And then I was like, oh, no, it's just. It's Unfortunate. Just human, yeah, it's just this can happen error. to anybody. <laughs> this can oh, happen yeah, to me. Got to tell you, if I am ever on a solo trip, I will be in a hotel. <laughs> I will absolutely hotel, not hotel, be in an Airbnb. In. Like, I will not. <laughs> Airbnb has to watch this and be like, hey, fuck. yo, fuck. Like, <laughs> they're like, ugh. You <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> This is a way to do this kind of movie, though, too, by the way, because they've tried to do movies about, oh, all these kind of apps are bad and they lead to mm-hmm. they can lead to you being murdered or whatever. And it's like this was wasn't the app's fault. Somebody wasn't using this like <laughs> this, somebody wasn't using this. Uh, sort. Of- all right. Know. Well, bye. <laughs> it's just, it's it's just us now. Well, we'll just never know what he was talking about. He got his we'll brain beaten in by the mother. Uh, the mother. Wow, I think Big Airbnb uh, got yeah. right. <laughs> big Airbnb. <laughs> big Airbnb shut me off. Where did y'all? Sorry, <laughs> Mr. Airbnb came and cut your Wi-Fi router. <laughs> hey, you're gonna shut the fuck up. We're already dealing with this movie. Which I've always wondered that. How do they? How do they? Ju- I guess they can just use the name. Of this that like if they don't show like a logo or whatever yeah they can just say like apple or something oh, you know i, I don't said know. air space b and b it's not your company yeah. it's <laughs> it's air and then b and b it's not no it's b a n d b wait where did y'all cut where did y'all cut me off at or where did i cut off at sorry <laughs> where did airbnb cut you airbnb off at? Cut? <laughs> um, honestly i don't remember was, what you were saying uh, i was just was, saying was a, yeah I was just saying that they've tried to make these movies where these oh apps are bad and and if people will use this maliciously to uh, to kill you or whatever, but this just being the twist on that that it just was a fuck up is actually really how you should do this sort of yeah. thing instead of uh, Uber driver kill person serial <laughs> yeah. killer. Justin Uber Long isn't the old man from Squid Game, like orchestrating this shit, like in this Airbnb that he owns. It's like, yeah, yeah. somebody just fucked up the rental listing. Which is this the first time that like people have died in this Airbnb? Is this, is this the first? Because the homeless man seems to think that, or seems to know that this thing has been in there killing people for forever. But yeah. they were able to just do an incomplete renovation on this home without disturbing this thing. How did Justin Long like not know about this? I'm like, he like it's his property, like it's his house. <laughs> he seems to be completely removed. I, I kind of oh, like okay. he's just completely removed from everything. He like he gave money to someone to refurbish homes, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah, like it's run by like a like a organization or whatever that just does this for people and like gives them money at the end. So I, I get that part. What I don't understand is. You know, again, maybe I'm built different. I see a random rope in a basement that's not mine. I'm not pulling it. Like no. I am not doing that. Like I'm For just gonna what? let that rope sit there. For I'm not what? Pull like leave a door open. No, thank you. Curiosity is not gonna kill this cat. Not today. <laughs> no, sir. I am not. I'm not. I'm not doing it. I'm, this movie would not happen with me in this in this Airbnb. There's well, so many. Wouldn't be in the Airbnb. <laughs> Yeah, this is not a good commercial for it's like uh also Airbnbs are just like now more expensive. So like why not do it? Big Hotel has to come out against this movie. Absolutely. And be like, see, we told you. We told I want Marriott you. to release a statement right now. <laughs> um, so yeah, the bait and switch eventually eventually Justin Long shows up to the house after he's uh been accused of uh to take from a whitest kid you know skit graping someone. And, uh, I just, it, it's so uncomfortable. The, all the conversations that he's having, like on the phone and stuff, it, uh, it, it's well played, but it's tough to listen to, especially that scene in the bar. And then he's just fucking about the house, like trying to measure shit and him going all of that was hilarious. 
him going down into the tunnels and not being concerned at all is the most white man privilege I've ever seen in my entire <laughs> because life. Because he, he found out that he can, like, add it onto the square footage of his house and, like, add just up the price of his rental. I'm like, what a scumbag. I cannot wait to see how you die. Like, I don't remember what the old, like, the old adage is about like, you know, doing something for slightly too long makes it comedy or whatever. But like the first time he does it, you like, are like, okay, that's kind of weird. Like whatever. Then he does it a second time and you're like, ha, that's kind of funny. Then he does it like a third and fourth time. And the whole fucking theater was dying laughing. Like as he's <laughs> like going into every room of this house with this tape measure. Right. Like, and he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> he looks at the, yeah. He looks at the cage and he's like, what the fuck is that? Anyway, <laughs> he measures he like measures around the cages. It's like Yeah, so also him like opening her laptop and like trying to type the password, getting it wrong, and then just throwing her laptop across the room. Everyone was like, What the fuck is wrong with you? I wanna know what he typed. <laughs> Who does that? He only that's I tried one thing. I wanna know what's the one thing you try when you try to open it when you got one What was he so con- what was he password. so confident in that he was just like this is gonna get it? And then he's like well, I don't know any other passwords. So. The word password is always the first thing you try every single time. Well, um, her name is this. I might as well try her name, right? Right. Uh, <laughs> I did like the, and this is just kind of like the English teacher slash like, per, you know, nerd in me, I guess. The He found Jane Eyre in her, in her bag. And mm. um, this, you know, the concept of like, this like crazy woman like living in like either the basement or like living in secret in someone's house like is like a plot point from Jane Eyre and I'm just like what? that's I was like that's fun I, I figured like, that would be a, a very thing fun nod to like that that like because it's like it's like Jane Eyre is this like classic like gothic romance story where all of the sudden it's like oh yeah I have a wife and she's insane and lives in the tower of my castle <laughs> it's just like what i figured that was like a like a reference yeah. or like a play into the plot or whatever i've just never read jane Eyre, so like, oh, it's, I all, it's awful like get it, it it's awful. Me, like, I was don't, like, don't like don't read it it's, i told you everything you, i told you everything. You know, like, <laughs> sick but yeah i knew that like had to be not like, a, a lot of reading i was like there's no way they just picked that not a lot of random. readers i believe listen we're not readers so i don't believe we have a lot of listeners who are like big readers but that one <laughs> I tried to be a reader at the beginning yeah, of the year. Yeah, you were in. And I was like, buddy, you started like a, go, uh, like a Goodreads challenge? Yeah, I was a just, Goodreads. I remember that. And then I was like, what would happen? This, uh, this summer I got a book that stunk and I, <laughs> I couldn't finish it. And I couldn't start another one because I'm like, I can't. I have to finish a book before I start another one. I can't like just, you can just like, move on. End, like, a, abandon a book without reading, like finishing it. So I just haven't read in a long time because that book sucks. But yeah, anyway. but I'm, I'm, I'm just dying at the thought that like the one big reader that listens to us is like, this motherfucker said, don't read Jane Eyre. <laughs> there's not a lot of hills I'm willing to die on, but that's one of them. Um, <laughs> He's an English teacher, folks. We are certified. So Sorry the grossest, the grossest thing in this movie. Um, well, there's two gross things. One, uh, well, well, a lot of no, yeah, I was like, that's underplaying it a lot. That, <laughs> the, the, the one she tries to breastfeed or does breastfeed Justin Long, which yeah. I think everyone in the theater was like, huh? <laughs> I pulled out my phone. <laughs> um, I said four, I said 4K 60 frames per second. <laughs> it's like, what? Oh. This, this is going in the, in I the need, hidden folder. I need this for, I need this for <laughs> research purposes. <laughs> um, but what was even more gross to me was when she was trying to feed him that bottle through the cage and Ugh, there was just no, hair no, and God. shit on i was like i was, was i vile. think i was i was gonna buh, yeah I was, buh, buh, <laughs> buh. Uh, that's what that's the noise i was making when i saw that bottle nipple it's like, buh, buh. like <laughs> oh shit um so i think immediately so that was disgusting, but I think immediately when they, I knew where it was going, when they hard cut to the guy that was living in that home, as soon as he walked out of the house in like the 1960s or 50s or whatever, I was like, mm-hmm. oh, this guy's a rapist. 80. <laughs> <laughs> this slender man looking motherfucker. <laughs> Absolutely. 
absolutely takes advantage. That guy has definitely that guy has rapist. played um that guy has played bad people in several movies. Richard Brake, I believe is his name. He looks like wasn't he also like the Night King at one point? Uh was he? Maybe. I feel like yeah, he was like the, one of the early versions of the Night he King. He looks like skinny Peter Pettigrew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I can't find like if, 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 if Peter Pettigrew did Adkins, it would, it would be this guy. But yeah, he's played a lot of villains. Yeah, he was the Night King. He was our early version of the Night yeah. King. So like, yeah, he just has one of those faces where he's played a lot of like evil characters. But yeah, when he evil came, face. when he came walking out of that, uh, it's good work if you can get it, I guess. But like, he <laughs> he came walking out of that home, and like, I was like, I don't trust this guy <laughs> immediately. He's like stuffing a woman in his trunk. He's like, it's a living. Yeah. <laughs> Let it, um, I, yeah. So, but hit the well, real twist of it was him actually being alive still. Yeah. I was not that, expecting that. Yeah. I did not see that shit coming. That was a, that was an interesting twist, but to have like, that interaction between the two of them mm. was vastly needed. Mm. Yeah. And that, uh, like I was telling Roy and the other day in the group chat, that was like the the meat of the movie, and part of why I love it so much is like that interaction between uh, what's his name AJ and Frank. Like they they are like the barbarians in this movie. Like you you come into it expecting it to be like you come into the movie having seen the trailer, maybe expecting it to be Bill Skarsgård, and yeah. then like if if you watch the movie, like you know the. Uh, a less cultured person than us who talks about movies all the time would probably think that like the barbarian is the mother character or whatever. Mm-hmm. But what like Zach Krieger, 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 whatever his point like with the movie is that Frank and Justin Long are the actual barbarians because they commit violence against women. Like, and that's like the most barbaric thing. Like all, first of all, all the movie is Frank's fault. And, you know, then you find out Justin Long is actually a rapist. Uh, But I think one thing that Zach Krieger does that's really, really subtle, but, like, it's just perfect to, like, drive the point home of this movie. He never shows, like, any of that violence against women on screen. Mm. Like, you know, he just shows, like, Justin Long's reaction to watching the videotape, right? Or, like, uh, he just kind of confirms, like, via a phone call that Justin Long raped this person. Like, a less skilled director would have, like, shown you justin long raping that woman or would have shown you frank like you know terrorizing these women i I would say the easier thing to the the yeah less skilled director would have shown at least one of like him kidnapping that woman that he he broke it he broke into her house but really it was all the just opened a window or whatever and we're all we've all seen enough movies to be like got it you know like, yeah he he definitely raped and murdered that woman and like you see all the videotapes you see that he's like done this a lot you right? see her dress and, uh, too you see her dress yeah. yeah so zach krieger like he drives the point home without like having to show you a woman being raped on screen right and it like causes the audience to, like fill in the gaps on their own right because justin long is like what's wrong with you like you're an awful person and like you you hear justin long say that already knowing that he himself is a rapist so like you, right well it's so like you, even at the at the end of the movie when they're sitting on top of the water tower uh or i'm sorry not sitting on top of the water tower when they're talking with the homeless guy yeah he says like he's like am i a bad person or am i just like a good person that did a bad thing and it's like sir you've proved time and time again that you are a you're bad a person. terrible like, fucking person and then he proves less, it again immediately it gets right. less and less and uh, uh, ambiguous as the movie goes on which is right. maybe a flaw but i you know it does it didn't bother me that much to have a little bit of clarity on that that oh yeah he is a piece of like is a piece, oh, of, he's a piece of shit no i think it's ser- i think it definitely like serves the purpose of like what dex was saying about like the the story and like the message that you're trying to get across of like both of these men are equally as evil and barbaric, but like one of them is more overt about it. And the other one is more like covert. And he's like, Two he's, sides he's, of he's, coin. yeah, he's less willing to take blame on himself. And he's like, no, I, I'm a good person. Like I, I just did it. Like I did a bad thing. I messed up. Whereas Frank is like, I'm a monster. And like, I know I'm a monster. Like, look at me. Like, you're not going to tell me I'm not a monster. And I think that's like, I, I just think that's really interesting to like show that like 
evil, you know, as much as like as cliche as it sounds like evil comes in all shapes and sizes. Like it's not just like one specific brand of evil. Yeah. Um, and I also think it's like part of it is like Justin Long is like the beginning of it, right? It's like, mm -hmm. oh, well, you know, she said no at first, but then she was into it. And like it just happened that one time, like, you know, I don't mm -hmm. I, I'm not a I'm not a bad guy. I just did a bad thing one time. Like I'm not like it doesn't happen often or whatever. I don't do this. Like and then Frank, it's like you know, after, you know, you do it the first time and you do it the second time and then you just keep on doing it. You keep going and going and you, by the end of it, like you turn into this monster, like Frank, right? Like mm -hmm. it just takes that one, like that first, once you take that like first little step, it's like, this is the path that you, like, this mm -hmm. is where that path leads. Like it's to you being this monster locked in this basement. Yeah. With this I'm like, that's, that's AJ. Inbred beast. Like, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say. But, mongoloid. <laughs> <laughs> to have all of that, like, yeah, the I know the point of the movie is like the real monster is is rapist. Right. Rapist, yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say is these men. But like to have the I guess the manifestation of that be this huge beast thing is an interesting interesting choice. Mm -hmm. I guess you need a monster to be actually yeah. scared of in a horror movie. Um, well it's like you you need like a stand in, like you need like it's almost like a a result it's like th this is like the the fruit of like the fruit of your labor is like this like fruit of your labor oh lord <laughs> is this like is this like beast that you've yeah. created and it's like you know you need it's like it's a stand-in for like that 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 like you know whatever yeah what happens yeah. what happens if this continuously goes yeah. goes on down which it's like so in talking about this, uh, it reminds me of, I don't know if y'all saw this movie, uh, the new Alex Garland movie that came out over the summer, Men. I indeed did. Okay. Um, I personally didn't enjoy it. And I'm like, a, I'm, you know, an A24 shill. I'm like, whatever they put out, I will say. <laughs> you got the hat? One of the, no, uh, A24 hates fat people. So it's like... I, I don't partake in their merch. You were watching um, Lamb like, this is my shit. This is cinema. <laughs> I actually skipped out on Lamb, even though I really did want to go see it. And then one of my friends was like, it was just weird. And I was like, oh, damn it. Okay. I thought it was going to be a smart decision. Be okay. I hated it. I hated it. <laughs> so you saw both um, Lamb and Men. Talk about A24 shill. Yeah. That's too. You saw, you, you saw Lambo, brother. Uh, anyways, I'm sorry. Uh, but men has like the same message of like the real monster is these men like but i think it does it in a more like it doesn't really ha like i i said something like I, when the movie first came out like the discourse around it was like so heavy i was like this movie feels like it has a lot to say but didn't know how to say it and so it just chose not to say anything at all um it's like it wanted to say like oh like you know toxic masculinity and like the cycle of like of violence and like all this stuff but it like it never really like latched on to anything where it's like i feel like this movie barbarian like has kind of the same message of like the cycle of violence and like how your bad decisions can like lead you into becoming this monster it like has a very clear message and i just think that that's like you know i think alex garland is a skilled filmmaker i mean i love ex machina and annihilation but like you know to see this story told well uh, was you know very refreshing after seeing men kind of fumble the bag a little bit. Tej, do you have anything to add on to that? I re I really like that point. I did not like like men for similar reasons. I I, I, I love Alex. It was it was almost too on the nose in terms of like it is like real hammering hammers at home. Whereas this there's more of a deaf hand here when we're dealing with the issues of and I. Appreciate I appreciated that more than I appreciated what Alex Garland did. Um, so let's talk about the let's talk about the ending, and then we'll get into. I I added uh, our best horror movies of the 21st century, mm -hmm. which um, T or for Dex it'll be like three, so it's fine. Yeah, but, I got uh, four to pick from. <laughs> um, no, we're not going to do a draft or anything. We'll just talk about talk about them. But um, so the ending, obviously, they they. <laughs> She, he shoots her, which I thought he killed her. I thought because of the way of he shot it and she was looking at the camera without blinking mm -hmm. or anything like that, I thought he killed her. And I was like, oh, 
that would have been interesting. That, if he, yeah. He um, was like, you have to get to the end of this movie with just Justin Long. <laughs> just Justin Long, yeah, exactly. So I thought he killed her in the tunnels. But uh, of wait, course they... Wait, is this the first time Royden fell for a fake out death and I didn't? Royden shit this is history uh, yeah. right now this is history i thought he, kill, I thought he killed her I was Royden, like, the she's not dead no way she's, she's dead. Dead. no way well that they kept guy. they kept going and i was God, like God. wait nah uh but um <laughs> and then she took a breath so i was like it was like confirmation bias like in two seconds but the uh <laughs> the so she she one she tries to kill the thing by hitting it with her car which whom's among us you know like if, who hasn't? If, if, who, <laughs> who hasn't? Tried, hasn't? Who hasn't tried to like kill a giant monster with your with your jeep? Like you know, that uh, that's a decision I would have made, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. Like, <laughs> you got a car, hit it with your car. <laughs> your grand Cher- your grand Cherokee. <laughs> um, My car only... like didn't start after that. Like it was already running. I don't know, but like whatever. <laughs> I will go to say the scariest shot to me of this movie was when she breaks out of the glass and the homeless guy pulls her out and the and it t- cuts to the monster like reaching out of the uh reaching out and then back in and slinking reaching out of the back basement in, yeah out of the basement oh, yeah that mm-hmm. shot was horrifying i was yeah. like oh i hate this but um anyway she hits it with her car uh goes back down into the tunnels because you know why not she has to go save this actor douchebag who she just met i have to save him there's someone in there yeah. it, and then for her kindness which i guess is a metaphor she gets shot um but okay so they get out they go find the homeless man the homeless man gets beaten to death we've we've covered that with uh, his own arm so badass <laughs> yeah you think you're having a bad day anyway i uh they they somehow run out of room they get they run up to the top of a water tower they run out of room justin long makes the executive decision that uh oh she'll definitely like follow you off the top of the like what if he was wrong and he just threw a woman off the top of the thing hey i mean there he didn't several care times. as long as he survived yeah no, there I'm just saying, like, he throws the woman off the top of the thing, and the monster is like, no, nah, I'm going to get you, too. Yeah, fuck her. I'm going to just kill you right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would have been... Um, there were several times in this movie that Justin Long almost reached final girl status, and I was like, is, Ju- is Justin Long about to be the final girl of this movie? Like, Exactly. I was like, I hate that a little bit, but then he you know, got his head ripped in half. And, um, um, yeah, so... so the mother, which was a, it's kind of an unintentionally funny shot. Her diving off the, the water yeah. tower. Hilarious. I, yes. Like, like Mufasa or something like falling. Like, <laughs> like, like it was a, it was a wild shot. She catches. She Hit catches, swinging. Just yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my. Just a swing. Yeah. Um, anyway. She catches catches her like a uh, like a football or something, and just cradles her into the end zone. But they, she doesn't die. Um, but Justin Long runs down there. Is like, oh shit, sorry, I didn't mean. To do that. And like, yeah, she was gonna kill us both. I had to do something. Like, I I'm not a bad person. I did the right thing. That dialogue at the very end though was shaky to me. I will say that I was kind of like, okay. And then I saw that he was going to die immediately. I was like, that, yeah, that's coming. But That's fine. the very end of it, and I think this teach me and you may have had a problem. I'm gl- I'm glad there was a little finality in it. Like you don't always get that. But he she there's no like battle or anything. He he just shoots. She just shoots the mother in the head, and it ends. And it shows her like kind of want, you know going back. I don't know what the messaging of that is. Where she had to kill the mother like i don't know if there is any messaging in that or if it was just trying to end a horror movie you know i don't i don't get it i don't think there's any like deeper message I, with it yeah it's just I think like, just... this is a like big inbred monster <laughs> like this, Fair. I, have to, I have to kill it <laughs> Fair, i've seen but it like four people today well, if you like if you think about like the the deeper like you know subtextual meaning 
uh, behind the inbred woman um, <laughs> and the no you know normal woman, um, you can see that her shooting the inbred woman is uh, a, a a clear distinction between suburbia and rural America. It's about uh, Tess finally being able to break the glass ceiling. You know, yeah, when the gunshot the rings out, it sounds like a glass ceiling shattering. You know, so that's kind of what Zach Krieger and is going Tess for. is a girl boss. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, nice, awesome. When's your TED talk? Now it's right now. This <laughs> your TED talk? Okay, yeah. I, I saw the little stream on your sites, and I was like, yeah, let me go and do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I um, get what you're saying. I can see how you would want like a little more right. there, there. But for me, it's just like, like you're not okay. We're it, done. We're done with like, this ride. I walk away. Like I'm not gonna go back into the basement. I got a gun. Like <laughs> she's like, I have to go make a documentary. Like I'm gonna kill this thing. <laughs> um. Oh, another thing. Another thing that I wanted to add. The whole bit with the cops not believing her was mm -hmm. a little on the nose, but I, I I I appreciate it. Yeah, that was. I was like so mad, but also I'm like, I mean. I do kind of get it. Like, yeah. This probably just looks like a crackhead to like if you're a normal person. Like, it's also it's about like, like men not believing women at all. It's, yeah, that right. too. But it, like, yeah. you know, well, it's like, like a soon, very soon, like dirty woman walking like into the gas station being like, yeah. hey, like I need to call the cop. Like I can understand. Like, you'd be like, yeah, it's just a random homeless crackhead who lives in like this as soon as she said, nowhere like, town. Not, she's like, I'm not a crackhead. It was like, mm, okay, well, you just kind of see it. <laughs> Sounds like something a crackhead, crackhead would say. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, anything else that we want to talk about this movie? Dex, you I can't an believe we're just kind of skipping over uh, my boy Justin Long. He's getting Oberyn Martelled. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, yeah. Oh, yeah. I... <laughs> it reminded me of, uh, this is for my church going <laughs> folks out there. Rest in um, peace, bozo. I don't know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it reminded me of like, you know, when like the, the strong men would come to your church and they'd rip a phone book <laughs> in half. Phone book <laughs> in half. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, I guess I got to get saved again. This is a spiritual experience for me. The funniest thing that they ever did in um, the Righteous Gemstones is have <laughs> is have yeah. them uh, do that bit throughout the entire season and like yeah. try to form like a pyramid or whatever, and they all get injured and stuff, and they're going to sue the church. It's a hilarious bit. But yeah, Love the, the, righteous gemstones. the Such strong man ripping a phone book in half through the power of Christ. I e well, it's like she also did that, and I just said, "God, I wish that were me." <laughs> you know oh. what I mean? <laughs> Destroy me, mommy. <laughs> yeah, who who's amongst us? Me amongst uh, us. <laughs> oh, I wish I had my. I wish I had my head crushed like a grape. <laughs> <laughs> if she would have done it with her thighs, that would have done it for me. Yeah. <laughs> I, <would've... laughs> I know it smelled crazy in there. <laughs> oh God, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like sploosh. Uh, <laughs> call back. Man. Call back to to our holes episode. <laughs> to, to 2020. Dear God. Speaking speaking of holes, this is the end result of that. They just kept digging. <laughs> and eventually they wound up under a Detroit suburb. The mother is actually Sigourney Weaver from that movie. <laughs> <laughs> the mother is kissing Kate Barlow. <laughs> the that well, the, you know the the grandpa and the uh, guy, the the evil guy in the basement, all kind do kind of look the same. Like all I needed him to say was, "That's too damn bad." <laughs> <laughs> There's something there. <laughs> yeah, this is a very niche reference to like the ten people who have been listening to us since 2020. But like, <laughs> I'm enjoying this bit. Um, so yeah, what a Barbarian. wild movie! What a what wild a movie! Film. Cinema, oh, love that uh, thank God. movie. <laughs> thank so God, it, thank God for Barbarian. Yeah, I mean, look, a semi well, it is like an original screenplay and everything just to get those movies made now yeah. and actually put in theaters to enjoy with other people. We keep saying it. Thank God. Like we need <laughs> more of these sort of middle of the road movies. And I wish mm -hmm. it would some something like that wasn't always horror. Cause that's where you kind of yeah. get the creativeness for, from f filmmakers now. 
is the horror genre because they're able to make their money back. Horror is one of those that they've sort of decided or that the general populace has decided is going to make money or is easy to make money. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can make barbarian for $10 million as a horror movie, but if you want to make it like a action comedy, it's going to be a hundred million (laughs) dollars. Right. But it's also, it's decidedly that they've, even though this is rated R teenagers will sneak, will sneak in and go see it. And you know, more and more people will go take dates to go see horror movies. It's just a thing. I will. I will say there was a ten-year-old in my screening with oh, the, her parents. God. <laughs> and I said, I think there needed to be just a quick like glance over of that idea a couple more times before we there, followed through with it. There was a group of like fourteen-year-olds that came into my head. I was like, "Oh, brother, this is going to be one of those ones that you, like Paranormal Activity." I don't know if y'all <laughs> you're, remember, you're like, getting like, a voucher at the end of this movie. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, brother. Yeah, that that one that one was tough. So let's talk about our favorite horror movies of the uh, 21st century. I put this prompt out on Twitter and a lot of people didn't understand what I meant. Uh, a lot people of people are dumb. <laughs> uh, shout out to our audience. We did get a lot of like responses and stuff, but I put I put what is the best horror movie of the 21st century? But I had pictures of four renowned horror movies from that thing what mm-hmm. i wanted was a, an honest response like what like you said the babadook for name first. any horror yeah. movie name any horror movie name okay. one <laughs> yeah okay and people were like well of those four and it was like i'm not talking about okay yeah as soon as you were talking about like people misunderstood i was like oh no did i, did I understand this? no you got it is right. he talking is, is he talking about me no <laughs> no you got it right or like I, the people tweeting, like it's none of these. Well, then what is it, bitch? Like that's the question. <laughs> that that that's. What is it? I text the group. I said, I think people misunderstand the word "what" for which, which is like, <laughs> all right, English. <laughs> you need to do better. Four movies job. doesn't mean you have four options, guys. So like, right. read the it's question. Like you see, it's like you see pictures, and our lizard brain goes, "I have to pick." <laughs> Derek, all I'm saying is you just got to do better at like reading comprehension. That's all I'm saying. You no, the English get, teacher, please. The English no, teacher, I, please I, teach I, that I to our youth. Uh, what I teach to our youth is indoctrination, by yeah. the way. Um, the woke indoct- agenda? Yeah, I, I do teach the woke agenda, unfortunately. Um, I'm being forced to. Uh, it, the, the, the libs have me at, I can't say gunpoint, because I mean, you know. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> I guess like sword point knife. Well, that's the one that they like that, to throw out. That's the one that people like to throw out is like, well, the knives in it uh, would be not well, great, great Britain. Be but I'm like, I don't know. I feel like Nancy Pelosi uses a sword. Probably. <laughs> Honestly, probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Anyway. Our favorite. Uh, <laughs> I can just imagine her with like, just a, just a broad sword <laughs> in her house. Her, her in that, uh, her in the dashiki holding a sword. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> Oh God! She gets up like after taking her knee and like just draws a sword. <laughs> we will fight racism together. <laughs> um, okay, Derek, you said you said the Baba Duke. Why the I Baba did. Duke? Um, because I was in college when I watched it, and it like imprinted on me like a mother wolf. Uh, no, it's like um. It was like one of those movies that I watched because I was not into horror like when I was in college at all. Like I'm a recent horror junkie, um, and but I saw this trailer and I was like, "This movie looks so good!" And so I watched it, and it was the first time that I saw a horror movie have a like a a, a second meaning. <laughs> like a, it was like an allegory for something. And if you don't know, The Babadook is this Australian movie that came out in like 2014, 2015, something like that. Um, where a mom and her son find this picture book on their front doorstep one day and they read it and it's about a ghost that comes and haunts their house and it ends up like trying to possess them and kill them. Um, it's, but like, spoiler alert, um, it's all a metaphor for grief, uh, mm-hmm. because the mom loses her husband. Like she loses her husband while he's driving her on the way to the hospital to give birth to her son. Um, and she now has to live with her son. And every time she looks at him, she's reminded of like, basically like you took my husband away from like, or like my husband would still be here if it wasn't for you. Um, 
and the Babadook is this thing that like comes and like haunts their house and like she begins to become like more aggressive towards him and like um eventually like basically like wants to kill him because it's like and it's all this whole thing about like how grief can turn you into this like different person and like grief can make you into something that you're not and uh i'm just going to spoil the whole ending of this movie <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it looks, eight years ago it looks terrifying i'm never going to watch it sorry yeah. it looks uh, horrifying it's it's fantastic um it's it, there's no like jump scares except for like one thing um but at the ending of this movie she you know gets the babadook out uh but instead of like it going out of her house it just goes and hides in the basement and you see later on in the movie she's like gathering like worms and shit outside in a bowl and she goes down to the basement and she's like feeding it uh... to keep it at bay and it's like, and it's this whole thing about like depression never really goes, depression never goes away. Like d- grief never really goes away. You can just kind of like learn to live with it. And it's like, I, I realized that when I was watching it and I was just like, it was literally like a, like hands, like hands on your head, just like, holy shit. Like, and so it was like the first movie that I saw that I thought told a really poignant story through the lens of horror, like through the lens of like a monster ghost movie and i thought it was very well done i thought it was very well acted very well shot uh snubbed at the oscars um i will i i will go on record saying that <laughs> like i know people talk about hereditary and tony collette but like the babadoo snub i'll say it <laughs> till the day i die um i, I am the babadoo hive and um I also thought it was very funny when the Babadook uh, became a gay icon. I was going to mention that. Wait, that's, like the only thing that. That's the only thing I know about the Babadook is that it became like a gay it's really, Twitter meme. It's, it's really the only thing you need to know. Uh, <laughs> so the the gay community adopted the Babadook as like a mascot. Um, and I think it stemmed from this one post on Tumblr where, something was, where someone was just like, the Babadook is gay. And everyone's like, <laughs> uh, it's actually just a metaphor for grief. And someone's like, "You're gonna sit here and tell me that someone made or this monster made a pop up book of itself just for the drama of it all, honey? That's gay." <laughs> like, <laughs> and I was like, "Well, they make a point." And so I remember like that vividly because like one of my roommates so in fun. college was uh, uh, like a, I think he was bi, uh, and you know he was like kind of just discovering that about himself in college, and so he would like just recite like gay Twitter recaps to us every night <laughs> we're just chilling in the living room and he's like so on gay twitter today and we're like good for you josh <laughs> glad you're finding Howdy, yourself bud. but uh yeah the the babadook was like a huge thing for him for like two months because like it was like dominating gay twitter for whatever right. reason this Our is the only, this is the only thing that i lo- know about the babadook um one second let's see here do y'all oh, see this for the multimedia no. presentation no oh, oh no 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 hold on here we go. Let me share my screen. Yeah, here we go. Uh, Let me. TBT to uh, Halloween when I dressed as the Babadook by my friend's <laughs> house and more grown-ups <laughs> drinking wine by <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. So good. It's so T- good. TBT to Halloween when I dressed as the Babadook, but my friend's house had more of a grown-ups drinking wine vibe. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I love this. So good. Somebody re recreated it as TBD to Halloween when I went to my friend's house for a grown up drinking wine party. <laughs> but there's more of a Babadook vibe. Babadook <laughs> vibe. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, that's that's one of my favorite. Every time that gets shared, I'm like crack up. <laughs> the woman's like, face is like. <laughs> All right, um, Dex, do you have a favorite horror movie of the 21st century? I mean, yeah, it's not a whole lot to pick from. I've seen besides I Barbarian. Recite, yeah, I can recite every horror movie that I've ever seen for you. I've got Midsummer, I've got uh, Candyman, The Invisible Man, and <laughs> Barbarian. Uh, Yo, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I uh, those are the only movies that I would classify as horror movies that I've seen because I do not fuck with that shit personally. Uh, Which I remember you saying that uh, a long time ago, and then when I when I saw you just singing Barbarian's praises, I was like, "Who drugged him to a horror movie?" Like, he's too much of a Christian. 
<laughs> Honestly, no. But I like I'm, I'm a bitch. I I am not about it. Uh, I was watch like I said, I watched this movie, Barbarian twice, and the second time I was still jumping and watching through my fingers and on the edge of my seat, mm-hmm. even knowing what was about to happen. Mm-hmm. So I don't I don't really do this shit. But yeah, since I can't pick Barbarian, I'm gonna just pick Midsummer because shout out to Florence Pugh. And I I watched that one and I was like genuinely enjoyed it and I was like. First of all, it wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be. I was like, mm-hmm. I was hammered watching it like because I was so nervous about watching a horror movie that I heard so many bad things about. But it was more like just like fucked up instead of being like yeah. really like terrifying to me. But I really like, you know, Florence Pugh's performance, obviously. Uh, and like, I, like the whole like tension and drama of it all. And the cinematography is great and all that. Uh, I like the, you know. I love a movie that's in the good for her cinematic universe. You know what I'm saying? Where like yeah. you get to the end and you're like, you know what? Good for her. Good for her. Good yeah, for her. she deserves. She needs it. She needs it. <laughs> she earned that. So uh, yeah, so I fuck with that one. Uh, I like actually. I like all the horror movies that I've seen. Barbarian is the only one that I've seen twice, but yeah. So that's where I'm at. Sorry, um, guys. Yeah. So don't worry, darling. Is going to be. Uh going to be right up there with hereditary for florence pugh's canon of horror movies <laughs> i <laughs> midsummer I... No, oh yeah, yeah. well no, no i said no i movie she's not even in <laughs> no i said don't worry don't worry darling is going to be right up there with her canon of horror movies you said her you said right up there with hereditary oh hereditary my bad my bad midsummer i will say one of the movies one of the movies i listed was uh the 45 minutes of hereditary that i saw before i left <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, uh Let's see. A lot. There's a lot of responses on Twitter, but I, oh, I just is, wanted is to... Nope, a horror movie because I've seen that one. Yeah, but <laughs> for like that ten minutes when they're in the house and it's like screaming. Yeah, the ten minute like rainstorm scene. <laughs> oh, that was horrifying. Uh, but also the digestion scene. The, that was like the best part of the movie is when they're in the house oh. and the like monsters just spitting blood on them. It's incredible. That, I I watched that and I was like. This is one of the most haunting things I've ever seen in my entire life. But yeah, that's why it was the best like part. Oh yeah, it was great. It was great. Um, my my one that I that I picked because I kind of kind of my go to my cinephile. Um, and a lot of people know this movie now, but it used to be like, oh, you haven't seen. Uh, was <laughs> it was it follows. Um, uh, yeah, that one's definitely an if you know, you know movie. Yeah, it definitely. You know, I still I still if, get if to you follow. If you follow, you follow. If you follow, you follow. <laughs> It follows. It tracks. Um, I, <laughs> I think. I think that movie is. I didn't quite understand what. Like, I had to have somebody explain it to me that's smarter than me because I'm a big dumb idiot. But I had to like. Uh, my uncle, shout out Tim. He was basically like, "No, there's a, there's a thing." <laughs> I'll never. We'll never know. We'll never know. Um, it I got him. It do be God, following. I, I don't, it do be following. <laughs> <laughs> so um, sh- shout out to Uncle really Tim. Did. Tim said there's a th- No, a thing. sorry. I don't know what is going on with my internet. The Baba Duke is getting me. Um <laughs> so there there's a thing with uh with horror movies dating back to uh Halloween and uh Nightmare on Elm Street that the, the slut shaming basically in horror mm-hmm. films. Mm. And uh, in the any final girl sex gets killed or whatever. Yeah, any final girl mm. thing, any like the final girl is is a tale as old as time. But yeah, the slut shaming of it all um, mm. is something that I wasn't even quite aware of. And this it just takes that trope, and it is the movie, which is which is uh, if you have sex, this spirit, this malevolent spirit that takes form of whatever you might be afraid of follows you around and you don't know what it looks like. You aren't like, it it can be a different person every single time. And it's not super jump scary or anything like that. It is just this uncomfortable haunting Mm -hmm. tense movie where literally you are running from something that you can't see the entire time and 
you're just like, okay, where the fuck is it? And they say this and then, you know, where is it? What's going on? Da, 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 da. And it's really good filmmaking to not show what you're supposed to be scared of the entire movie. And mm. some people may hate it. Some people may actually like, like, like the standard horror Halloween sort of. And I get that. But this is the first one that I saw where it was tension building to the max. And you're just like, God, you're just on pins and needles the entire movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and once you're done, it's a very nice catharsis at the very end of the movie, which goes a long way. But uh, what? As someone who will never watch this movie, I have a question. So is like, is the message of the movie that having sex is bad? Or is it like using that to prove no, I think, message? I, I think it's just like that trope of like the final girl, like, or like that anyone who has sex in like a horror movie in is a going to... Yeah, yeah and it's, a, a teen horror movie is it's like most of the time it's like you have like your tropes of like characters in a horror movie like you have like the slut you have the jock you have like and then your final girl will always almost end up being the virgin like um the like, she's this pure you know like nice sweet girl but like in this movie it's like the girl that ends up being like the final girl or whatever like she could she's the only one that can see this thing because she has sex with a guy that it's like, it's following. Yeah. And so he like passes it along to her and he's like, okay, now you have to deal with this. Like, right. Uh, I don't, I don't think there's any like real message about like sex is bad, like chastity all the way. It's a Christian no. movie. <laughs> no. Yeah. I was definitely <laughs> thinking like, this shit sounds like something they would <laughs> play you, at an app. And it's assembly. University. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know you if I had this in high school, but like my like sophomore year of high school, they had all of us come into like the the performing arts center for a uh, an assembly, and some woman talked to us about like the the gift of abstinence, and oh, uh, you know how not to have sex uh, because it's bad, and you'll uh, um, you'll get diseases and you'll start you'll get oozing and you'll die. <laughs> <laughs> so i'm like uh is it follows just a, a really scary abstinence assembly like if you have sex you will get followed and you will I mean, die i mean technically the you movie work, <laughs> unintentionally maybe works like that but no it's, it's more about it's more about how we how we place this undue shame on people that have sex for no reason at all like when in reality like everybody you know everybody has sex and it's just a thing Speak that happens. Speak for yourself, Royden. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. I am a child of God who is unmarried. Yeah. Thank you. I've been untouched by a woman for 27 years. <laughs> um, so it, single, it, tier, single tier for a woman. <laughs> hey, maybe the mother All my tears are single tears. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, I, I, I really appreciated sort of not only the messaging of the movie, but just the, the way that it builds tension throughout and the ending is actually really funny how they end up killing the monster. But yeah, it's, it's, it's really worth watching. I believe it was on, it was on Netflix for a while. Uh, Absolutely. I don't know what it's, what it's currently on. I definitely think you can find all these movies on shutter to a streaming service, which I will never purchase. Also, no, but, thank you. Uh, will not be in my house. Here. No, <laughs> not in my house. We lost Tej to uh, to the internet gods. Uh, sorry, um, you may lose me here again too. I don't know what is going on right now. We got we got ghosts. Me and Dex got it. Me and Dex got it. Yeah, we uh, So a lot of people went with Hereditary. Somebody said Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, a movie that is going to suck. Uh, let's see. Oh, that movie's gonna be so fucking awful. I cannot believe people are gonna go I, watch the movie. I watched the trailer and I was like, this feels like a porn. Yeah, like it, it's it's the same quality. I was like, I've I've seen that video before. Like, I didn't even watch the trailer. I tweeted it from like three different accounts because like that's right. just what you do for Apollo. It's like you know we got to tweet the, we got to tweet these trailers out. We got to get this engagement, but didn't watch it after any of the four times <laughs> that I tweeted about this shit. Um, a lot of people said get out. Uh, some people said Train to Busan, which is a horror movie, but like. I feel, find that to be more of like an action thriller. Yeah. Than anything. That's like yeah. the zombie yeah. joint or the whatever. Zombie movie. It's one of the better zombie movies of all time, which I guess if you want to want to count zombie movies as horror movies, sure. Like I'll allow that. I find that to be more of like more of like an action movie, to be completely honest, which people will disagree with. But if you watch it, it's just action packed from start to finish. 
Um, kind of like with the 28 days and 28 weeks later yeah. sort of thing. Um, okay, so these are two of the scariest movies of all time. And I, I the Insidious movie, the first Insidious movie. Ick, dude. Yo, Yucky. I, I Yucky. watched that. And when that thing crawls on the ceiling and like scurries around. No. Mm-hmm. No. Uh, I saw Darth Maul pop up behind that woman and I said, I think I'm good. Yeah. I think the scaredest I've ever been, there's two times of the most scared I've ever been in a the theater was The Conjuring, the first Conjuring, which is one of the better haunted house movies of the last, uh, well, definitely decade, but of the last probably 20 years. Um, and the f- look, it's cheesy and bad now, but the first paranormal activity. Oh no, that shit was scary. I watched that in the Fain Theater in oh. uh, in in Livingston, Texas, where your feet just stuck to the floor. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, you couldn't even get up because your feet were stuck to the floor. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't run away because my feet that were a, that a captive audience. <laughs> for so captive audience for some ungodly reason. We weren't sure if it was like soda or what was on the floor of the Fain Theater, and your feet would stick to the floor. Anyway, I watched that movie and you you could walk back to my house from the movie theater. It was like two blocks away. <laughs> so I didn't have a car. I walked to the movie theater, saw the movie oh with some God. friends, walked back. And it was just this gray, gross day outside. It was quiet as fuck outside. And I just was like looking over my shoulder the entire time. No. Got home. <laughs> Nobody was home. And Ooh. not only that, my like there was always some like lamp or something on in my house. The house was pitch black. Mm-hmm. Pitch black. <laughs> I opened up the door. No one you home. Have to leave. House is pitch black. I'm not lying to you. I just went outside and played with our dog until my parents got home. What time, <laughs> what time was you were this? like, not tonight, buddy. Yeah, I am I, not dying. It was like six in the afternoon or something, six in the oh, evening okay. or something like that. They were just gone. I don't know where they were. They were just no one was home. And I was like, Yeah, I'm gonna Mm-mm. I'm just gonna wait this one out, and I did. And they're like, "Why are you in the backyard?" I was like, I'm just, uh, "Nothing, no reason, no reason." Just, just vibing with my dog. I all the time, bro. mom and dad. You don't, you don't remember? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So a lot of get outs, uh, mm-hmm. things like that. You said the Babadook, Midsummer, Us, which no. Uh, okay, <laughs> Us is a good. I movie. I'm a Us defender. No. Sure. No, it's not one of the best horror movies of the 21st century. However, I still love that movie. So, um, this guy said the, this. This guy said the Mist, Sinister, Hereditary, Get Out, It, The Conjuring, The Ring, Saw, and Train to Busan. Buddy, pick one. We'd not ask you for a top ten. <laughs> anyway, so those are some. He's of trying our... to get on screen rant. He's like, he's like, Dex, you see, you can put in a good word for me. <laughs> um that speaking of uh check me out here soon uh as soon as i get home from recording this podcast i'm gonna go write an article about Ooh. barbarian on screen rant. So uh, you, you already have that. one up on uh, apollo hou yes. yeah i got a review up for on apollo hou check that Copy out apollo hou.com as always uh <laughs> yeah so that has been uh one take podcast sorry to tease we couldn't we couldn't mess with the he, audio he was missed he was missed i i just wanted teach to be here so bad and like i was like please where uh, is he but thank you to Derek. Thanks, Gavin. thank you to Derek for coming back on for yeah, an man, actual good awesome. movie he, fine every time we have you on i'm like we gotta have Derek right. on more well it's like <laughs> i was thinking about it the other day and i was like every time these guys have me on it's for like some dude bro movie that they know i haven't seen and i'm just like i'm like i'm gonna make fun of this whole movie this movie the whole time but then it was like for this i was like thank god i was like i could actually like discuss that's the fun the, part the, we're gonna have you watch like remember the titans next okay I, you know, I'll, I'll <laughs> listen, and you have to make it as inaccessible for me as possible. Like you have to talk about football the whole time, right? That's the that's the whole point. Perfect. So, perfect. Go ahead and put me down. Shout out to Derek. Derek, where can they find your Twitter or anything that you may be writing, reading, or doing? Yeah, so you can follow me on Twitter at Derek Fultz, D E R E K F U L T S, um, and uh, I occasionally have a movie podcast. Um, just every now and then, uh, stir the plot. 
I also have uh, a new project coming down the pipeline that I can't really uh, reveal too much about just yet, uh, but it's going to be super fun and it should be out like the first week of October. Uh, so be Sick. on the lookout for that. Um, also, uh, I just want to say uh, this is more so insider baseball for Apollo Media and uh, everyone. I'm back in the Houston area and I am willing to, uh, as the kids say, slut myself out for Apollo Media. Uh, so if you need hell someone, yeah. um, just let me know. Nice. Dude, gonna, hell yeah. You're going <laughs> to actually be able to get to go on the TikTok that I have been not, not invited to. So, the... <laughs> hey, man, look. You come down here. No, nah. we got we got time. Then we'll nah, do I'm, it. I'm from and that like, neck of the woods. It's too it's too it's too humid. I can't do it anymore. It's, I'm, too, I'm, it's, I'm it's not, getting better. <laughs> it's getting better. I'm not like drenched in sweat by the time I get to work. So, yeah, you got to reacclimate. Caitlin and I went down there for my birthday. We we're like, mm-hmm. Jesus Christ! I mean, y'all did come <laughs> so in the middle of the summer though. It was so bad. <laughs> That's fair. Um, so yeah, you can find all of our stuff at Apollo H O U, Apollo H O U dot com at Apollo H O U on Twitter, Facebook, and uh Instagram, as well and as TikTok. TikTok. Uh, yeah, hundreds of thousands of followers on TikTok for Hell yeah. uh hey, do do the rotten tomatoes thing. <laughs> Play nothing Twitter. else, bro. Nothing else. Every time we post a video, thing? literally yeah. anything else, it's like five thousand views, six thousand views, and then we'll post like the the Rotten Tomatoes game the next day, and it's like a hundred thousand views in two minutes. Like everyone just hates anything else that we do. They only want us to guess Rotten Tomatoes scores and nothing else. <laughs> Play Free Bird. Um, <laughs> I think you can follow us at One Take Pod. You can follow us at One Take Pod on all platforms. There's also like another One Take podcast. Imposters. Yeah. Identity theft is not a joke, Jim. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, I thought I was going on their podcast. Y'all didn't send me the link early enough, so I was like, I guess I got to go on the other one take pod. <laughs> yeah. uh, so shout out to them, I guess, and shout out to the person that added us and was like, "Oh, sorry, we thought you we, <laughs> I thought you were this better <laughs> podcast." <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, no, we are, we are. No, that's us. Uh, uh, anyway, so shout out to them. But uh, find us at the number one take pod all on all your platforms. Hey, go uh, like and subscribe for our uh, for sorry. Give us a review. I'm having I'm having an aneurysm, guys. Give us a review. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Give us a review on Apple as well as Spotify because you can just swipe five stars now on those podcasts. We really appreciate oh, okay. that. Yeah. So Derek, go do that for us, please. And thanks. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But totally. You'll be one of the one of the five that have done it, but we really appreciate the that. Few, and the, the few, the proud. It really, <laughs> it really does help us. So if you've gotten to this point in the podcast, we really appreciate it. Uh, and leave us a review, even if you hated it. Or maybe don't. Maybe don't bring down the algorithm. If you, just lie. If you, if you hated it, lie. Yeah. If you enjoyed me as a guest, my name is Derek Fultz. If you did not, my name is Tej. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, you can uh, you can follow us all there. You can follow Tej at uh, the Underhooks Pod as well as Slander U, putting out college football and fighting content. Uh, Dex, what else are you doing as well? Uh, yeah, like I just told you, I'm writing for Screen Rant. Uh, always working on Apollo shit constantly, all the time. So follow Apollo H O U. Follow Watch with Apollo. And uh, you know all the Apollo accounts. You 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 know them. You love them. Go follow them. There was more <laughs> since we wrapped up and we didn't cover the "Don't worry, darling, darling" slander or slander. I guess in our last, you haven't, you haven't covered it at all. We covered it a little bit last week. Um, we, we I don't know if we need to cover it this week. We're already wrapping nah. up, but uh, no, get us out of here, dude. <laughs> yeah, Harry right. Harry Styles did that. I'll say Harry that. Styles oh, sucks. absolutely. He absolutely did that. Allegedly. Knock on wood. Don't sue us. All right. Thank you, uh, Dex. What are we doing, though? Hashtag support Florence Pugh, baby. Let's go. All right. We're out. Bye.